just put another quick video on uh, my next step of my winter prep. So you'll notice that the uh, the colonies so have been taped. So I've taped all the seams. Uh, I leave the top one open so I can access the top. And also if there's any moisture, it'll just uh, leak through some of these top uh, edges. Remember this bottom box here is a single. The brood box is there. And this is filled with insulation. So it's got six inches of insulation plus that uh, feeder slot. And you'll notice that I also tape the the vertical seams between the colonies. And uh, what that does, it forms a nice, uh, basically bubble. It'll help keep the, the shared heat between the colonies. Uh, the next step will be to put the bubble foil wrap. So basically, you can see it there. I've got it to length and I'll just wrap it around and then cut out the entrances. Uh, you'll notice too that I've uh, replaced all the entrances with wooden entrances with uh, basically two little screws. Uh, they're about two and a half inches, three inches, and they're set up with little screws so they're easy to take off. Uh, the issue with the Paradise uh, Honey entrances is they're actually quite hard to manage in winter and they're also plastic so they tend to be really really cold and uh, they transfer heat or actually cold inside and they do freeze so by having uh, these wooden ones it helps uh, manage uh, the dead bees in the bottom and uh, basically it helps uh, keep the heat inside uh, so we had minus 12 i think this morning minus 11 uh, so it's pretty much time for me to to start wrapping them up they did have a bit of cleansing this afternoon it got up to maybe six in the sun uh, but they'll be calling for cooler nights so just to show you, that's what the typical Paradise Honey Box entrance looks like. Uh, and it's really not uh, the best for winter, uh, for wintering. So I just replace them and take them off. So I'll, uh, I'll come back uh, with the bubble full wrap in a moment. So we got a little visitor there, a Whiskey Jack came to visit. Uh, they're really friendly here. Uh, but you can see I've placed the uh, bubble foil wrap and I've taped most of the top seams and I've taped the entrances. Uh, a bit later I'm going to come in and actually fasten the bottoms there to the, uh, the base so that it's nice and tight against the entrances. But uh, in a nutshell that's what I do with the bubble foil wrap. And I'm actually going to take out the uh, screen bottom boards now. Uh, these were old entrances from before, but I'll use them to pull the uh, top, sorry, the screen bottom boards. And then I'll uh, start putting the extra insulation around the, uh, the enclosure. So pretty straightforward. So I started putting the backboard, so the wind block. You can see I just, uh, I screw it to my base because it's nice two by eights, nice and strong. Uh, then there's two inches of styro behind it. Uh, once I put this side on, it'll tighten everything up against the back side there. Still have to do a bit of work on top of these hives, so I want to put uh, some sensors uh, just below the uh, the feed board so I'll cut through the sugar fondant put some sensors and then bundle it back up so I'll be doing that hopefully tomorrow and you can see it's really forming up it's pretty much done uh, and then there's another piece of styro there that I'll tighten up once I put the roof on and everything's gonna be nice and tight against the colonies so in a nutshell, that's pretty much most of it. And as I add little things, I'll just keep making little videos just to show you what I do. But uh, hope it helps.
and this is more for extreme beekeeping than uh, folks down south. Uh, but I'd say a nice uh, wind block in the back, a nice sheltered uh, type approach uh, does work well pretty much anywhere. Thank you.